scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Amen. Please be seated. Just a very brief session with us. I believe in the power of God's word and I believe in the teaching of God's word because therein lies the power of the believer all that happens to the believer in this kingdom depends on the understanding that we have of the Word of God the Bible says then open he their eyes their understanding that they might understand the scripture so let's look at our text and we'll examine a few things this morning Isaiah 43 from verse 18 and 19 Isaiah 43 18 and 19 it says remember ye not the former things neither consider the things of old the next verse says behold i will do a new thing now it shall spring forth shall ye not know it i will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert there are three instructions there and it's important that we understand what the prophet is saying number one he says remember ye not remember ye not remember ye not the moment the bible talks of remembrance and memory immediately he refers to the past because you see time is broken into three dimensions there is past there is present and there is future there is yesterday today and tomorrow are we together and god designed it that way such that today and tomorrow can correct whatever it is that was wrong with yesterday there's nothing you can do about yesterday when time time only goes forward so god fragmented time into yesterday today and tomorrow so he says remember ye not the former things the first instruction here and that is my first admonishment to us this morning is that overdwelling in the past whether positively or negatively can hinder advancement and progress overdwelling in the past it doesn't have to be negative overdwelling in the past is a cancer to progress a cancer to advancement hallelujah when you dwell on the negative past it is able to create discouragement fear and it will even deflate your passion listen when you dwell in yesterday and all the negative occurrences and the negative experiences that came with yesterday among the many things that it can do to you is number one it will plant fear are we together now fear of the future fear of today number two it sustains the ability to bring discouragement 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 and number three it can deflate your passion you need passion to press forward to push against the vicissitudes of life so the prophet is giving us an instruction he says remember ye not the former things former pain former disappointment former mistakes are we together now yes and you see the past has a voice it always seeks to relieve itself in your today are we together it is a reason why you can remember something that happened 30 years ago 20 years ago and begin to cry a current tears 
are we together now yes you can watch a movie that has been acted five ten years ago and cry as though it were happening now the past always seeks to relieve itself in your today it is your responsibility and by this instruction to remember not that is a statement that demands responsibility so there is the negative past that can bring fear to remember means to bring to memory to remember means to make alive again are we together now remember ye not the former things the former past because it creates fear it creates discouragement and it deflates your passion to press but the former the positive past can also create complacency can create pride and overconfidence it can even create indiscipline are we together now so over dwelling on both the negative and the positive past can affect you i take it again that the positive past when you overdwell there it can create complacency it can create pride there are people who their own becoming is that they succeeded yesterday that was the worst thing that happened to them their success of yesterday so beclouded them that today and tomorrow came and they did not have the passion to succeed again i built a house yesterday i healed the sick yesterday i prayed in tongues yesterday i raised the dead yesterday he said remember ye not the former things there are many many people who are not able to do great things because their yesterday beclouded them whether your yesterday was positive or negative over dwelling on it this is why god never put the human eye at the back because it does not expect you to concentrate facing backward are we together if you want to turn with your eyes back your whole body must turn back here's what apostle paul had to say philippians chapter 3 from verse 13 and 14 is god speaking to us already Philippians 3 13 and 14 this is a very powerful lesson that I learned years ago it says brethren I count myself to have apprehend not to I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing say one thing one more time say one thing but this one thing I do forgetting the things that are behind and reaching forth for those things which are before it says verse 14 i press i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of god in jesus christ i remember i prayed a prayer many years ago and i told the lord i said father may i never know the extent of my impact so that it does not affect my focus and affect my advancement to know that i have the privilege of blessing lives across the nations is enough for me there are many of us who have the itch to reminisce and continue to review the past not so that we can strategize for the future many of us continue to flatter ourselves around little results spiritual results financial results career results and you find that we're not able to make progress and beware of people who clap for you too much and stop you from moving forward there are people who clap for you even when you have not done much Great men know how to shut their ears so that they are able to make maximum progress. There was a story that was told about someone who was about to climb, um, you know, to climb a very high tower. And whilst the person was climbing, there were two groups of people on the ground. And some of them were clapping for him and encouraging him. And some were saying, you better stop and come down. Two groups all on the ground he was climbing it was quite an impossible feat but he kept moving and some were clapping for him to come down some were clapping to notify him to continue and the man kept clapping and they found out that he he did not seem to secure their attention when he got to the top you know someone came and motioned and was talking to him and he could not reply the person eventually they found out that the man was deaf 
that was the reason he was able to climb so those clapping for him he could not hear them those discouraging him he could not hear them one thing that was his focus was that he was going up and nothing would change his mind if he had the ears to hear those clapping for him pride will make him to even leave the ladder and come down if he heard those who discourage him maybe complacency and fear would make him to not be able to continue the applauds of men and their discouragement can affect you all the same is someone learning so the first instruction is remember ye not. He's not saying to not celebrate the past. He's saying overdwelling on the past, whether positively or negatively, can affect an individual. If you're with me, say amen. amen. This one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind, I press, I press, I press, I press. Hallelujah. The second instruction is found in verse 19. Please give it to us, Isaiah 43 and verse 19. Isaiah 43 and verse 19. It says, behold. The word behold is a very interesting word. The word behold means be sensitive. The word behold means see. The word behold means conceive in your spirit what I'm about to say. Are we together now? So when he says, behold, let me have your attention, he says. Remember ye not the former things, the first instruction. Second instruction is behold. You're not going to understand and benefit from what I'm about to say when you are distracted. I need your focus. I need your discernment. Did that not happen to the man at Gate Beautiful? The Bible says Peter and John went to pray at the hour of prayer. Then they met this man who was crippled from birth. And then he said, look on us. And the Bible says he looked at them, giving them his rapt attention, expecting to receive something from them. And Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but such as I have, give I unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He needed his attention. So when the Bible says, behold, he's saying, take your eyes away from the things that are distracting you and focus. Martha and Mary were two people who demonstrated the power of focus or otherwise. So Jesus is teaching and he's having a session with his people as his custom was. And the Bible talks about Martha who ran up and down trying to do so many things. And she was angry that the women were not there to help her. And Mary was seated at the feet of Jesus. Jesus replies Martha and he says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and you are upset about many things. He says one thing is needful. And this one thing Mary has chosen. One thing, not many things. One thing is needful to sit at the master's feet. So when he says, behold, he said, listen, you are giving all kinds of things your attention. Focus on Jesus. Focus on that which is about to come. Are we together yes there are so many things that clamor for our attention social media has his voice and clamoring for attention men have their voices all kinds of things the Bible's speaking Paul was speaking and he said there is as it were many voices and he says none of them is without signification we live in a world today where we are immersed in so many voices all kinds of things bringing different opinions to you culture has his voice failure has his voice men have their voices technology has his voice one thing is needful so when he says behold let me have your attention finally so that I'm able to reveal to you that which I desire to do. Is someone listening? Behold, see, conceive, contemplate on this in your spirit. Now the third instruction or down this comes as a prophetic word. It says, I will do, not just I will say, not just I will think, I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. I will do a new thing. Do you know what that means? It is important to know where God is moving. Because where God is moving is where his power is moving. Where God is moving is where his anointing is moving. It is a dangerous thing to be where God was and not know what he is doing now. He says, I will do. I am moving. I am acting. And then he says, a new thing. Now, pay attention, please. What is the implication of this statement? I wrote here, 
when God says I will do a new thing that means there is a performance about to happen that means there is a wave of the spirit that means there is something in the mind of the spirit per season and per time sometimes it is an unfamiliar performance when we talk of something new it means something that may have never occurred again please listen carefully every time new things are about to come whether in the spirit or in life and destiny they demand a certain levels of understanding it says behold i will do a new thing he never said behold i am acting a new thing the emphasis is new are we together please write this down i wrote here that experiencing a new dimension of god a new dimension of the move of god a new dimension a new leaf a new page in life and destiny generally demands two things and this will be the apex of my teaching this morning and then we're done so he says i will do a new thing a performance i am moving i have a reason already experiencing the new demands number one discernment and flexibility please write it down discernment and flexibility when god talks about a new thing it means it is an unfamiliar performance it is an unfamiliar pathway you're going to be following that requires discernment it requires flexibility Two stories very quickly in scripture for our understanding. Luke chapter 1 and from verse 26. Luke 1, 26. So this is a young virgin, a young lady espoused to a man called Joseph, preparing for her wedding like every young lady would, happily planning her marriage, and then something disrupts her life that will be a disruption forever the bible says in the sixth month the angel gabriel was sent from god unto the city of galilee named nazareth reading to 38 a long reading please pay attention to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was joseph of the house of david and the virgin's name was mary 28 and the angel came to her and said hail thou that art highly favored the lord is with thee blessed art thou among women when she saw him the angel now she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation should this be in other words this has never happened to me in this fashion and the angel said unto her fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god 31 and behold thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son you shall call his name jesus 32 he shall be great and he shall be called the son of the highest and the lord god shall give unto him the throne of his father david he shall reign over the house of jacob forever and his kingdom shall be of no end 34 the bible says mary said unto the angel how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man just hang on here before we continue so the bible says i do a new thing here is a young virgin who is having a very disturbing salutation from an angel and now he tells her that you are going to be with child and yet without a man and she's saying this but there are times you will need to walk on water when it is time to walk on water and you are waiting for the water to part you may remain there forever the same person who parted the sea is the same person who walked on water and even empowered peter to walk on water you must know when to walk on water and you must know when to watch it part waiting on the god that parts the sea alone will keep you there as a victim forever because there are times that god will not decide to part the waters there are times that god can bring deliverance for you but there are times that you will still enter the lion's den and he will protect you there you will still be in the midst of the fire and he will protect you there flexibility and discernment are we together the bible says the lord will deliver you from every evil attack that is a strategy that he has invented for the victory of the saints but there are times where the bible says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff are we together now they comfort me he says thou preparest a table for me in the midst not the absence of my enemies the most important thing for the believer is to discern what is god doing now 
what is God doing now how is he moving now Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 God who in sundry times and diverse manners spake to us in time past through the prophets had in these last days the Bible says spoken to us through his son through his son whom he had appointed let's continue it says whom he had appointed to be heir of all things he spoke to us in time past using a strategy but he's now designed to use his son it is the reason why the scribes and the pharisees had a problem with jesus because jesus disrupted order he disrupted the way they knew things to be for instance in john chapter 5 the bible talks about a man who had been at a pool called bethesda that once a year an angel would come and steer the water and whoever was the first to move in would be healed that was how they knew healing to happen yet jesus came with another way to heal he said you do not have to wait on that water rise up and be healed discernment and flexibility I know that God increases people by blessing the works of their hands and God commands that we be diligent but do you know that God can put it in the heart of a man to come and bless you and raise you in one day because of the peculiarity of the pain that you've gone through is called favor are we together that in one day slaves of 430 years were given gold and all of these things but the purpose was that they would go and build the tabernacle in the wilderness so if the only one you know is the god who prospers the work of your hands you may never experience the god listen god can cause abundance to your farm but he can give you manna too in one day it is still the same god is someone learning now The challenge is that most times because of the way that we have worked with God or we are used to God working with us we peg ourselves around a formula and a strategy and we're not flexible enough to say God however you want to do it to you be all the glory chances are excellent that when we say God bless you your mind goes straight to an uncle somewhere or some business person you are related with you are saying amen but your amen is not genuinely by faith your amen is connected to someone you are aware of and yet in his wisdom he wants strangers to be the ones who bless you because there is a statement that he wants you to know that he is god all by himself and he can make even a fish to bring coin if god asks you to go and look for money will you go and bring it from the mouth of a fish the diversities that are in God already tells you that you need flexibility. Just because God is not moving the way he moved 10 years ago does not mean he's not the one moving. Are we together? Yeah. Flexibility and discernment. Flexibility and discernment. Who would have known 20 years ago that the world will be the way it is now in terms of technological advancement hallelujah and there are people sadly who found it difficult to adjust to the changing times and sadly to their detriment there are businesses there are companies there are technological products that packed up because they did not have the ability to be flexible listen even in the communication of the gospel there's no time for us to discuss this i would have shown you in mark mark's account of the great commission jesus said in fact let's look at it mark 16 15. is god speaking to someone this morning mark 16 15 watch this he says go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature please leave that statement there just go to verse 15 keep it there and let me explain something this is particularly for our missionaries who are here i understand that there are missionaries who are here jesus told us what to do go ye take action he told us where to go all the world he told us what to do preach he told us the message the gospel but he never told us how he left the strategy flexible because of the changing times are you seeing that the action remains the same the mission field remains the same the assignment remains the same the people to reach remains the same the message will never change but how it will be communicated he left it to be flexible 
behold i do a new thing behold i do a new thing i am going to bless you but not the way you know it to be i am going to anoint you but not the way you know it to be are we together behold i do a new thing demands flexibility and discernment number two very quickly and then we pray experiencing a new thing a new dimension from god a new move will demand obedience the second demand obedience be willing to receive instructions and to honor them especially prophetic instructions the prophetic always heralds new seasons this is how god operates that every time a new season befalls you a prophetic instruction will come there is always something that he demands to be done to bring you into the new just because prophetically God desires to open up a new season listen to me when Jesus was about to become I mean to start his ministry now he needed to encounter this prophet called John the Baptist hallelujah and when he came to john he had never been baptized john sees him and says behold the lamb of god who takes away the sins of the world and then he comes to john to be baptized and john says i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes and jesus says suffer it to be so that all scripture be fulfilled is someone learning you must be willing to receive prophetic instructions please listen to me you will never enter the new that god is doing if you do not know how to discern to receive and to honor prophetic instructions let me show you three stories and then we'll pray you will never see more of god more of his hand more of his grace when you are not prepared to receive prophetic instructions and to act on it My, um, john chapter 2 the wedding in Cana of Galilee. We'll begin our reading from verse 5. The Bible tells us that there was a feast in Cana of Galilee. And wine had finished. Can you imagine that wine is finished in a wedding? Embarrassment was imminent. And a few people came and met Mary, the mother of Jesus. And said, what do we do about this situation now? And the Bible records that she went to Jesus. And Jesus said, woman why have you come to disturb me it is not yet my time and mary made a very instructive statement let's read together if you can see it. ready one to read his mother said unto his servants whatsoever he saith unto you do it not think it not argue it not wish it there is timing to the move of god you can you can abort the move of god through complacency and the delay to act are we together whatsoever he tells you to do do now the bible says he told them fill six pots with water what a risk and then he says once you fill them fetch it don't taste it don't verify if it has become wine be on your way to the rulers in those days they didn't forgive they didn't pardon they killed immediately you can imagine their lives were on the line but that was the price for the new and the bible says while they moved a miracle happened not before not during while they moved and when they got to the rulers the rulers said what have you done to us that people bring their best wine at the first time and you have hidden this one till we drank all kinds of things and now you have brought the best imagine the honor that came upon those women those men you would recommend them for every other wedding and say these men have a way of bringing a very good wine their lives changed overnight because they were willing to obey prophetic instructions. Is someone learning? Willing to obey. Willing to obey. Willing to obey. One time they had toiled all night, the disciples, and did not have any catch. It was such a frustrating thing. And Jesus told them, he says, cast your net. He said, master, we have toiled all night. You find that in, I think, Luke 5 from verse 4 and 5 there about it says nevertheless at thy word nevertheless at thy word now when he had left speaking he said unto simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught verse 5 simon answering said unto him master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless someone say nevertheless 
nevertheless at thy word i will let down the net verse 6 the bible now says when they had this done they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets break behold i do a new thing in your ministry a new thing in your family a new thing in your spiritual life a new thing in your finances a new thing but it will demand flexibility you don't choose how god moves in your life he's lord all by himself your assignment is to submit to the method that he decides to use as far as his wisdom is concerned hallelujah one last point and then we'll pray is god helping us this morning I want us to avoid a very serious tragedy that happened in the book of Acts where people because they are not familiar and they do not have discernment and they are not attentive to the things of God they can miss the things that they so greatly desire let me show you something that happened in Acts chapter 12 and then we'll wrap up for this morning Acts chapter 12 the Bible says Herod stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church and in doing so he killed James the brother of John and when he saw that it pleased the Jews he now held Peter please pay attention planning that after um, the feast of the unliving bread that he was now going to apprehend Peter. Are we together? Peter was kept in prison, verse 4 says, under quaternion, four quaternion of soldiers to keep him. That after Easter, he will bring him forth to the people. Verse 5. Let's read together. It says, Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him so the church was praying father in the name of jesus we will not let what happened to james happen to, to peter now we are praying that you will deliver him in answer to their prayer watch what happened the bible says that night bound hand and chain the bible says next verse please verse seven it says an angel of the lord came in response to their prayer and smote peter by the side and told peter stand up let's walk together let's go now jump to verse 10 for the sake of time so peter is led out by the angel are we together and the bible says the angel departed from him 11 now watch this when peter came to himself he said now i know that god has delivered me from herod and the expectation of the jews next verse when he considered the thing watch this now the Bible says he came to the house. They were praying that he would leave the prison and arrive home safely. Was that not the prayer? The Bible now says he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, where they were gathered together. They were still praying. Now, verse 13. Peter knocked at the door of the gate. I am the answer to what you have been praying. The Bible says a damsel came to hearken called Rhoda. This is a tragedy I want you to avoid. Verse 14. When she knew it was Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how Peter stood at the gate. Verse 15. And they said unto her, You are mad. She constantly affirmed that it was him. And they said it is his angel. How do you pray for something and it comes to you? Because it did not come in the form you expect. You are driving it away. He said you've been praying. This is the answer to your prayer. You've been praying and fasting for my release. Now I have come to knock the door. And you are rejecting it because it's in a form you did not see. Lord give me increase in ministry. Give me increase in my life. And God is bringing a man to your life. And you say Lord I'm asking for money not a man. Not knowing that the resources are hidden in men. You must have the discernment to know how answers come. Peter knocked the door. And they said no you are not the one go back so how did they expect the answer to come their minds were already pegged at the answer coming in a certain way God could not bring this kind of deliverance that whilst we are praying you see that most believers do not expect answers to what they pray for because when the answers come we reject it Lord grant me the healing power let it come upon my life and then someone says i've just been healed of cancer 
and you yourself you say no i don't believe that me i've never prayed for anybody like that don't 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 come and lie to me because you did not even expect it to happen listen if you want the new to happen i leave you with these two instructions one discernment and flexibility number two obedience there are times that you have never walked on water but you will have to step out at his command hallelujah if you want to see god move like you have never seen you will have to do something you have never done my life is full of stories that i can tell you to attest of these new things those who make progress and those who scale heights from one level of grace to the other can i tell you you must learn how to believe him you must learn how to believe him even when you do not understand him he called a man called abraham in awe of the chaldeans and the bible says that he told him come i will send you to a land that he, abraham did not know but in obeying me i will make your name great i will bless them that bless you trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. The Bible says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of His word, what a glory He sheds on our way. While we do His good will, He abides with us still, and to all who will trust and obey. You have to learn to trust him even when you do not understand him you have to learn to trust him even when you do not understand him missionaries you must have to learn to trust him even when you do not understand him scientific Christianity will always end us in disappointment there are times where you have to take blind faith Lord I depend upon you I may not see wind I may not see rain yet I know that my valley shall be filled with water calculating everything and crying for guarantees is why we are not able to scale heights and to do new things when the worshippers, I was so touched, the trumpeters came and they made a very profound statement. They said, when Jesus becomes your inheritance, that was a powerful statement. Your inheritance. That no matter what you do not have, this one thing gives you a guarantee that he is my inheritance and he is the basis for every other thing that will come to my life in addition to all you have heard all through this week i bring you this message that if you desire to see the new in your life particularly in your spiritual life missionaries you are going back to the mission field don't sit down and say the way we have been doing it is how we'll continue why don't you reach forth in the place of prayer and say lord how do you intend for this land to be reached how do you intend for there is a higher level of efficiency in the spirit businessman could there be a better way of approaching this such that you will see God honor you like never before it is important to keep the modus operandi that God has given us but we must have the flexibility to know that God is always in motion it is dangerous to be where God was and not where he is it is dangerous to be where God was he says why i know he was in the grave but he's no longer there and she remained at the grave waiting for jesus and he said listen he has left here he was once here but he's no longer there don't stand at the grave praying and crying whereas the king has resurrected and he's even left he said go go ahead he has left this location hallelujah we are going to pray god desires to do something new in your life and in my life in your music ministry in your business in ministry those who sustain the flexibility even in our world from a technological standpoint from a governmental standpoint those who have the flexibility to adopt the new doesn't mean to just bend into everything but i can tell you excessive rigidity is the key to depletion and it brings it makes people obsolete the flexibility to adopt even the leading organizations across the globe they will tell you that one of the basis for their advancement is the flexibility the ability to be able to adjust 
advancement in medicine advancement in business advancement in all kinds of fields have happened today because there is a department called research and development am i right on that and their assignment is to adopt new and more efficient ways of carrying out the same thing once upon a time many years ago when a woman is pregnant the labor that she goes through around the fireplace is enough to kill her and the baby all because she's trying to deliver that was the method that they knew but now you can imagine all kinds of advancements in technology if you are still camping around that you will find out that so many things will not be able to happen to your life god is speaking to someone perhaps the way you have known to pray is to just spend five minutes and just say minus uh, god there's, there's a way they say it plus jesus minus satan amen maybe that was good based on your upbringing but do you know that that strategy of prayer does not produce power and strength you will need to invest time in the place of prayer building up your spirit man what else do you need to know about prayer what else do you need to know about the word of god what else do you need to know about the house of god your knowledge must always be transitory first corinthians 8 and verse 2 and then i close the bible says but if any man thinks that he knoweth anything he says let him know that he first corinthians 8 2 if any man think that he knoweth anything he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know there is always something new to know there is always something new to do so when god says remember ye not the former things i repeat one more time that excessive dwelling on the past positively and negatively can destroy your potential for making progress then he says behold your attention i do a new thing it may not be the way i did it before but it's important for you to find consolation that i am still the one who is moving can we pray now please rise up on your feet rise up on your feet we're about to pray and I'm going to request that you pray before I speak over your life I believe that God is doing something new even in the Presbyterian Church hallelujah and I really want to salute the leadership and the eldership for having the flexibility to allow the diversity of the operation of the spirit it is something that is not usual it is something that is not common however it holds the secret for the move of God that there are many people who may not be part of what God is doing in the nearest future and the reason is because of excessive rigidity to the move of God there are things that should never change you do not renovate a foundation you can renovate buildings you can renovate you can rezink a house when you are about renovating foundations you are destroying the structure there are certain foundations that should never change however architecture teaches us that when you want a building to be modern and more attractive there are you must be flexible enough are we together to add certain things that is why engineers construct the building with a belief that there should be flexibility enough to remodel it many of us have been able to remodel our homes same foundation on bending on changing that foundation is, is jesus the foundational doctrines that make up the presbyterian church but the approach must be flexible enough to accommodate what god is doing today i'd like you to lift your voice and let us pray and thank the lord for all that we have heard thank him if someone's saying thank you jesus go ahead and thank him thank him for this conference thank him for all the speakers thank him for the leadership the eldership please make sure you do so because i'm about to speak over your life thank you father thank you thank you thank him from the depth of your heart for all that you have received the impartations the communications of the word of god inspirations that have come from the worship ministry speaker after speaker bringing different perspectives of the word of god father we thank you thank you for this conference thank you for this day hallelujah now i want you to pray from the depth of your heart 
my past I wave you goodbye the pain the disappointments that try to make me believe I cannot make progress the Bible says remember ye not go ahead and pray all of the disappointments of yesterday the limitations that came with yesterday even the crowns of yesterday someone go ahead and pray I was Saul yesterday but I am now so I'm Paul now I was Abraham yesterday but I'm Abraham now the conveyor of the covenant and the promise go ahead and pray I may have persecuted the church yesterday but today I am an advocate of the gospel I may be Rahab the prostitute yesterday but today I have become Rahab one who will follow the plan of God go ahead and pray past limitations past failures in the name of Jesus laxity in your spiritual life prayerlessness of yesterday carelessness of yesterday I remember not the former things the pain of yesterday the mockery of yesterday the business failure of yesterday I stop over dwelling in the past someone go ahead and pray I lost money yesterday I lost my house yesterday perhaps I lost a loved one yesterday as sad as that is you must obtain grace man of God you will never go forward if you dwell in yesterday camping around the limitations of yesterday my family did not do well yesterday I did not do well academically yesterday he said remember ye not the former things nor consider the things of old hallelujah next prayer point behold I do a new thing God give me discernment discernment to know what you are doing so that I do not drive my miracle and drive the mantle coming to my life and drive the new that you are doing through the absence of discernment if someone praying open your mouth and pray let it be from the depth of your heart discernment the grace to know what you are doing the grace to know what you are saying is a he that hath an ear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches He that had an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you